Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So actually this is multiple movies being reviewed in one video because it's the Etheria Film Festival, which usually happens once a year in Los Angeles in person, but because of COVID-19 this year, they're not able to do that, but they luckily found a home with Shudder for this year and Shudder will be running these shorts from June 19th to July 20th and they're running it like the festival itself, or I'm sorry, like the event itself. Um, so instead of having individual short films just available on Shutter, you can watch them how you want. They're running it as a full block of all nine of the short films that are involved with this. So Etheria focuses on female uh, filmmakers, and there have been so um, at least there's at least one that I remember bigger name that came out of it, Gigi Saul Guerrero, who did the short film El Gigante, which I believe is still on Shutter at the moment. You can check that out; it's really awesome. Uh, I would recommend it. I did a review on it on my channel. So, um, for me, I really liked being able to, since I got screeners from Shudder, so thank you Shudder and thank you Etheria for allowing screeners to happen. Um, so for me, I liked that I was able to eat, to watch them individually, not as one giant block, just because I was able to take a little more time and really, you know, look into them as I had time. But, you know, if you're watching them, you can do the same thing. You can just watch a few and then stop and then come back to it because being a streaming service, Shudder will hold your place. And so it's just these awesome little bite-sized films, which that's one of the reasons I love short film, because if you don't want to put a whole lot of time into a film, but you want to get the satisfaction out of a cool story, a lot of short films will do that for you. So, and I think a lot of these do. Overall, I had a really awesome time watching this. I really, really enjoyed it overall. Varying degrees of what I thought about these films. So I'm going to go through, no spoilers really. I'm just going to read the little synopsis that, that, that they put out there, Etheria did, for each one of the short films. And then I'm going to talk about certain things I felt about it that are not spoiler related. And then I'm going to give it my star review out of five stars with half stars in play. So it's a range. There are some higher ones, there are some lower ones, but... Let's get into it. So the first one I watch is called Waffle. Uh, Carrie is at a sleepover with the socially awkward, mysteriously orphaned heiress Katie. Friendship in a society that grows ever isolating is explored as Carrie learns the hard way that Katie always gets what she wants. Now with this one, I felt like it immediately went for a really fun tone and it is comedic. It is kind of like a dark comedy um, with some horror elements to it. But it, it's also a very societal uh, commentary based film which I also really liked I, uh, so I wrote down like I thought the concept was really funny but it was also a very serious commentary at the same time so I really like it when films kind of do that it's just like you can laugh at it and you can think it's funny but you also think it's very serious at the same time and this short film I thought did that uh, also there's a twist to it in the very end that I did not see coming that I really enjoyed and that I thought it was kind of funny, but it was also a little bit sad in a way. And if you watch it, let me know your thoughts on that. So overall, I gave Waffle a three and a half star rating. I enjoyed it. I thought that was good. And if people, you know, you know my rating system, a three and a half is pretty good because I, I do not give out fives, but rarely and four and a halves are very hard to come by. So just know that. So the second film, um, the next one is called Maggie May. Oh, I'm sorry. I should say who did these films. My apologies. Waffle was done by Carolyn Hudson. Um, no, I'm sorry. I read that wrong. Carlin Hudson. Like my name, Carlin, but spelled C-A-R-L-Y-N. Usually people assume that Carlin's a female's name anyway, so there you go. So, sorry, Carlin Hudson. And hey, cool, another Carlin. <laughs> uh, anyway, so the next one, Maggie May, was done by Mia Kate Russell. And she was out of Australia. Now, most of these were from the United States. This is one from Australia, and there's one other one from another country. Uh, but I'll point that out when I get to it. So Maggie May, sometimes doing nothing can be the worst move of all. So, yeah, very vague. But it's important that it's vague. Just saying. So there's a real quirky camera shot in this one that's used, like, right before the title pops up. So when you're watching it, just make sure... You keep your eye out for that. It felt really odd to me, but I also was really drawn to that shot. It, it felt very interesting at the same time. That's kind of why I used the term quirky, because it felt weird and like maybe it didn't work, but then it felt like it did work. It was this weird thing. Um, and overall, the camera work actually is really nice in this film. It's very engaging. Uh, cinematography, really nice. Directing, really nice with it. Uh, really, really did dig it. It's also pretty gory, and the practical effects look good and the acting is nice as well so this is a pretty overall good one 
Uh, it reminded me a little bit of the film Gerald's Game in a way. And it kind of has a similar point to it in the end, to be honest. And I thought this had a really good point to it. And the synopsis kind of, in a way, points that out to you. So, But you need to experience it to kind of understand that. But uh, really well put together. I quite like this one. This was one of my favorite ones. Um, yeah, I, re I really did like it. So uh, I gave this four, four out of five stars. This is a four-star one. Very, very good. This is one of my faves. So the next one is was probably my favorite favorite, although Maggie Mae was right behind it. Now, this one is called Basic Witch, and it's not actually horror. It was under the category of magical, because for the film festival, it's like horror, sci-fi, and a few other genres, dark comedy and all that. So this one was marked as magical, which I don't know that that's really like a subgenre. I don't know. But um, I would see this more as like a dark comedy in a sense. So this one's by Yoko Akamura. Uh, young witch Lily prepares a magic pumpkin spice latte that forces Brian to relive the physical experience of their terrible sex from the previous night, but from Lily's perspective. Well, that tells you everything, basically. <laughs> um, but it's really well done. Uh, the camera work and the way that they did the lighting looks unbelievably good and crisp. The directing is awesome in this. The camera work is awesome. Cinematography is so good. The acting is really good in this, too. And it just looks so good. Like I said, the camera work and the lighting. The lighting is really well executed with this. Um, it's a good mix of funny, uncomfortable, and poignant all at the same time. I thought this was a very original story. It's not an original point to be made or original concept in, as far as like the, the end point they're trying to make. But it's done in a very original, very interesting way that I had never even thought of. And it's very thought-provoking. This one actually really stuck with me after the fact. So much so that I talked to my wife about it and I showed it to her because I wanted to make sure she saw that. I would have showed her the Maggie Mae one as well because I thought that was particularly good. But I don't think she would have been able to handle the gore in that one, so I didn't. Um, but I could easily show her Basic Witch. Um, this was, like I said, this was one of my favorites. This is also a four-star one in my opinion, quite good. The next one is called Conversion Therapist, and this one's by Bears Rebecca Fonte. Uh, a pansexual polyamorous trio kidnap a pray the gay away evangelical, evangelical sorry, conversion therapist and torture him until he sees the light. Now, unfortunately, that is the whole thing. Like, there, there's really nothing to it additional, honestly. Uh, it's very, very basic. I don't think it's a very compelling story, unfortunately. Uh, I think it's a compelling point that it's making, but I would have liked it done in a much different way, a much less bash you over the head with it. Th that's just my personal opinion. There may be some people out there who really love it. It kind of harkens back to a subgenre that, as a as a overall genre, we've kind of gotten away from for the most part. And there's kind of a reason for that. It's just more of like a base thing that doesn't give you a whole lot more and I that's kind of what this felt like to me I feel bad saying this but this is my honest opinion of it the acting was kind of rough and the way the lines are delivered actually keep the comedic moments from actually landing unfortunately uh this was probably the roughest acting of all the short films in my opinion also reactions to what actually happens in this film do not at all match reality um, so there's a real problem with the writing and the acting overall, unfortunately. The message of the film is unbelievably on the nose, and subtlety would have been a much better way to go about this, or at least somewhere in between, to be honest. I mean, I understand that you're pairing not being subtle with this particular subgenre, but and in that sense, it kind of like matches, but it's not it's not for me and like i said this is just a personal thing there might be some people who love this and i hope there are because i have a lot of respect for people who do film um i used to do some film but i don't so much anymore but anyway unfortunately i'm giving this one star i didn't like a whole lot about it to be honest um the next one offbeat by mert uwerkirk uwerkirk from the netherlands this is the other one not from the united states there are, only, there are only two of them. In a polluted future, 20-year-old drummer Ali wants only one thing, to get inside the dome, where the air is clean and the best musicians live. In order to get in, he must pass a series of absurd tests. This is another interesting original concept 
that I really did enjoy. Um, it's fu futuristic, and they did a really good job making it look futuristic, especially with the CG that they use. The CG actually looks really, really nice, and it kind of fits seamlessly into how it was shot and the appearance of how it was shot, the cinematography and everything. So cinematography, directing, and the acting is really good in this one as well. Uh, the social commentary in this is well executed. It's done with subtlety and a splash of humor, and the humor actually works in it. So I quite liked it. And to sum this up, it, it kind of felt to me like a Black Mirror episode, but obviously a, a lot shorter. Uh, if they would draw this out and put it out as a Black Mirror episode, I kind of feel like it would fit with the whole grouping. So I, I liked it. Uh, I'm giving this one three and a half stars. I, qu I quite enjoyed it. The next one is The Final Girl Returns. This one's by Alexandria Perez. A driver emerges from a massacre unscathed and finds himself trapped in an endless cycle of saving the final girls. The driver soon learns that one mustn't fight the rules of horror and the past he's been driving from catches up to him. Uh, first of all, I thought this had great music, uh, really solid cinematography, actually really good cinematography, and really good editing to it. Those three things really, really impressed me about it. The music, the editing, the cinematography looked really good. The directing is really good, too. The acting, a little bit rough, um, and that kind of detracted a lot from it, unfortunately. Uh, there's some There were some interesting quick flashes of what kind of happened in the past in, in this film, which actually pair with vague events that create kind of confusion and generate interest in it. So I thought that was a kind of cool idea behind it, and that's part of why I say the editing in this is really good. Like, those kind of, like, quick flashback things just make you more like, what is going on here? Like, you want to piece it together at that point. So it's pretty compelling. It kind of, like, sucks you in. Um, yeah, like I said, the, the acting was detracted from it, unfortunately, for the most part. There were some good moments with the acting, but overall it was kind of rough. Uh, there's a good point and concept, but the story doesn't really come together, to be honest. Although a lot of the technical components are very, very excellent with this film, I think overall the story just needed some more work to really come together. The way it ended... I think you could have brought it together a lot better if there was just a better ending to it, a more impactful ending. It kind of felt like it fizzled out at the end when, with all the interest and in everything that was being set up in the beginning, you just wanted more from it. But because of all the technical awesomeness of it, I'm giving it three stars. I still quite enjoyed it. It was a good ride. And um, Alexandria Perez, I really hope that you do s some more stuff because... Like I said, those technical components were really good. Very impressed with that. The next one is Live, and this one's by Taryn O'Neill. An online live, online live caster with a dangerous brand has a crisis of conscience over her volatile career choice in a future world where jobs are limited and conflict is currency. Now, there's some prolonged high-pitched sounds in this one that were really, really too much. I knew it was part of the sound design to kind of, like, get to people and irritate them, but it was way, way too high-pitched. It was way too loud, and it actually made me have to turn the volume way down. Um, there's a fine line with those types of noises in film, and you got to find that, and they, they stepped over that line with this. So I think that needs to kind of be fixed. Cinematography is pretty solid in this. I, I did enjoy that. The directing was pretty good. Uh, they did a pretty good job of tackling a currently developing societal issue. So the fact that they tackled that, I had a lot of respect for. I thought that was a pretty cool concept, a good idea. The unfortunate thing is, overall, the story felt pretty flat, in my opinion. Uh, and it needed to really go somewhere in the end. I felt like it stagnated throughout, well, hence me saying flat, and it just... I just felt like it never really went anywhere. Like you started the film and then ended the film and it felt like nothing really transpired so much. Um, so it just didn't have impact. It didn't, it didn't land, but there's some good ideas there. There's some good technical things. And overall, I thought it was pretty solid. Uh, I give that a two and a half stars. So right smack in the middle for me, man in the corner. Now this one was done by Kelly Breslin. What starts out as a hot hookup with his dream guy turns into a nightmare when Daniel realizes they aren't alone in the house. Now, this was a very interesting setup, and I say that because it was vague. Now, that's that's a good thing for the setup, but it ended up being a bad thing for the end of the story, unfortunately. 
Uh, there's an odd mystery presented that hooks you in. Like, that's part of the vagueness in the beginning. And the initial explanation doesn't feel like a real explanation. There's kind of something that happens while something else is going on. And then it's kind of, oh, there's a questioning of it. And then there's an answer to it. But then you as the audience, like the way it was shot and the way it was set up, you're very much like, nah, yeah, I think there's something else going on. And that really does a good job of kind of hooking you in. The problem is after that happens, it doesn't do enough after that. There are some really cool moments after that, but the very end seems a little abrupt. It seems not that fleshed out, and it seems too vague in my opinion. There's interesting use of lighting and uh, color lighting and shadows in this. I really like that aspect of it. It looked really good in my opinion. Ultimately, it just felt like it needed to be more fleshed out and actually probably a bit longer to kind of get more of the story out there. The other thing is there's a very large sex scene in this and it felt like there was maybe too much focus on uh, doing the sex scene and not enough focus on doing other elements of the story. I'm fine with sex scenes and this has a gay sex scene in it. No problem. I don't care. Any sex scene, I'm I'm down for it. I if it fits into the story, and it does fit into the story with this, but I just felt like it was way too prolonged. And you know, shave some of that down and put a little more story into it, and it would have been actually really good. Um, so I overall gave this a two star rating. So still not bad or anything. So uh, the last one is I can't believe it's the last one already. Going pretty fast. Ava in the End was the last one, and this one is by Ursula Ellis. After tripping over her dog and dying, a struggling actress wake, wakes up in a virtual purgatory and waits for her mind to be downloaded into a new body. Very interesting concept, very original. The main actress's voice, unfortunately, was oddly muffled throughout the film. It, I, I don't know if that was an intentional choice. It may very well have been because of the kind of purgatory this person's in, but... It felt weird, and I don't think it worked. It was more detracting from the film than anything, and it came off more as a technical issue, is what it sounded like, even if it was intentional. The acting was okay, but there's kind of a look a lot of the times of thinking about acting. You know when you can see an actor and an actress thinking about acting? Now, I think part of the problem with it is that they're not interacting with another person in this. And that's really challenging from what I can surmise. So it was demanding, and I think that's part of the reason for that that being a little rough. It's 10, minute, it's 10 minutes long about, and it kind of drags, which is bad. Uh, there's a social commentary there, but it actually ends up feeling pretty inconsequential by the end. I think there needed to be more fleshed out with the com with the uh, common social commentary, and it needed to make more of an actual point at the end. It felt more like it was a really interesting concept that just was presented, and there were a few aspects of the concept laid out, but there wasn't like much of a point made. Um, at least that's how it played out to me. Maybe I missed something. I don't know, but that's how it played out to me. So overall, I'm giving this one and a half stars. I wasn't huge on it. Um, so yeah, but it looked pretty good, actually. And there was some good CG in that. So bravo on that. Anyway, that was it. That was all nine. So like I said, you know, please don't shoot the messenger if there are people out there who are like, I really love this one and you hated it. Why? Or I really hated this one and you loved it. Why? Personal opinion. And like I said, I have the utmost respect for all these filmmakers, especially because they're not big names, they don't have big budgets, and I know that type of stuff is tough, so keep going, I really overall enjoyed what I saw here, and um, yeah, it, w it was a really cool experience. Well, going through this, I, it made me think back to when I was watching the episodes of Creepshow, uh, and doing reviews for all of those, I just love the kind of like short film, bite-sized stories, it's, it's, a lot of, it's a lot of fun, so I had a great time, um, so glad that Etheria came to Shudder, so People out there, make sure you check it out. Um, like I said, oh, let me pull it back up real quick again. Running on Shutter, June 19th to July 20th. I would say definitely don't miss it. It's a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Even if there's a few of them you don't like, you're going to find ones you like, trust me. And more than one, guaranteed, because I did. I know I did. Because obviously, as you saw from my ratings, overall, very positive. But thanks, everyone, for checking this out. Thanks, everyone at Etheria. Thanks, everyone at Shutter. Really, really appreciate it. 
Um, do me a quick favor, hit that subscribe button if you like anything I do, this video or other videos. It's a quick way to repay me because I don't make money doing this or anything. This is all just for fun and to connect with people and throw the information out there. So hit that subscribe. And if you do, make sure you hit the notification bell so you know when I'm putting up new videos or doing my live streams because I do those. Put some comments down there, especially after you watch any of these because we'll make the comments spoilers. So go ahead and do that and we can talk spoilers about this stuff if you would like to. If you're already subscribed here, uh, just hit a thumbs up to let me know you're still watching. And if any of the filmmakers see this, feel free to put down a comment um, and let's let's chat about what you did. If you have a problem with what I said, if you think you know it, it bears more explaining, I missed the point or whatever, go ahead. Or if you want to say, hey, rock on, you really like my stuff, whatever. But thanks everyone for checking this out, and until next time, keep it brutal.